It's getting a little bit silly now, isn't it? Yes, people, what's poppin'? Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yeah, and I hope you're doing well, mate. Genuinely, you hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News. Yes, it's everyday Chelsea News. Chelsea are looking to get Paul Wynn Stanley's replacement from Brighton. This is becoming such a meta caricature of new Chelsea. Just keep going back to the well. The well that, by the way, hasn't served us very well. Ugh. Weird, weird. Sam Wallace of the Telegraph has got an exclusive on that, and Reese James with a positive post. Ding! Thanks for joining me here today, friends, and thanks to all of you who have subscribed to this channel, Football Therapy, because you're all welcome. If you choose to subscribe, hit the bell. Thank you for liking the video and being my Valentine from yesterday. Yeah. And let's get into it. First of all, check out this picture from Reese James's Instagram story showing. That's right, his feet and football boots, which can only insinuate he's on the grass. He's playing football already. I swear this dude just had surgery. Of course, many of us Chelsea fans for such a long time were just waiting for him. We all wondered, should he go and get the surgery? Is that the final way to ensure long-term fitness for our possibly best player, our captain, certainly our, one of our superstars in Rhys James? Just need to get him fit. Of course, Malo Gusto's been incredible, but we're already running Gusto into the red zone, and it's nice to have both. Rotate them both. But yes, make no bones about it. Reese James back is an amazing thing. Reese James and Ben Chilwell, fit and on form, are simply game changers for Chelsea. You may have forgotten it, but it's true. Watch these guys in the Champions League final against Pep Guardiola's Man City. They were incredible. They play slightly differently, but they're both excellent offensively. Of course, Reese James is a little bit more of a serviceman rather than a goal scorer, but his finishing is insane. They're both good at defending in their own ways. They both occupy different parts of the pitch. Of course, Chilwell likes to sort of come inside and make those inverted striker runs. Uh, Reese James likes to go out wide, put crosses in, but he himself will drift inside if a chance comes when we're in possession in the final third. Both amazing players, super dynamic. And I was talking on my Instagram, I do Instagram lives all the time, at Football Yannick, if you want to follow me. Someone asked me, Yan, how do we get Gusto in the team when James returns? Like, is there a way to have them both? Or, you know, can Gusto keep his place? And I said simply, you just drop Malo Gusto. I know that seems harsh to one of our better performers and young players who could do with the developmental time on the pitch. But yeah, people have just forgotten how good Reese James is. This is the Reese James that Real Madrid fans have been twerking for for a long, long time. Who, you know, when Chelsea were in trouble, that Arsenal fan was like, oh, do you reckon we could get Reese James off Chelsea? This is the guy. He is that guy. And we need to get him back in the team. So. If he's accelerated his um, recovery, if he's ahead of schedule, let's not put pressure on him. But personally, as an England fan, I want to see this guy call up to the Euro squad in the summer. So, good news! Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. And we are going to hop over now to the article from Sam Wallace of The Telegraph and find out what the ruddy heck is going on with this Brighton poaching business. Chelsea have made an offer to poach Brighton's head of recruitment for the second time in 16 months. This time, Sam Jewell, who got the job at the Sussex club because his predecessor, Paul Wynn Stanley, left for Stamford Bridge in 2022. Chelsea have made their move now amid fears from the London club that former Brighton technical director, Dan Ashworth, will take Jewell with him to Manchester United. Is this a Jewel or Jewel? I'm not sure. As yet, it's understood that no final decision has been made by Joel Jewel, and staying at Brighton is also an option. No official approach has been made by Chelsea to Brighton over Joel. He was Brighton's replacement for head of recruitment, Win Stanley, of course, who left to join Chelsea to become one of the two sporting directors under the club's new look ownership in November 2022. Joel took over Win Stanley's role at Brighton on an interim basis and was appointed permanently in February of last year, the same year the club had also lost sporting director Ashworth to Newcastle United. Mm. I mean, I want to believe, I want to believe this is really intelligent you know, data scouting stuff from Chelsea, you know, some real professional headhunting. But we're just going back to Brighton constantly. 
We're literally getting the replacement, or trying to get the replacement of the guy we've just hired. Can we not see how comical that looks? I mean, is that intelligent? It, I mean, I know Brighton have overperformed at times, but surely there comes a point where you look at the last 18 months or two years of Chelsea poaching Brighton players, managers and recruitment and directors, you know, mid-table two seasons in a row. Don't eventually at one point we go, we need to stop doing this. <laughs> the offer of the job at Chelsea is understood to be a global scouting role in charge of negotiations for both the London club and of course Strasbourg in League 1, also owned by Bedadik Bali and Todd Bowley's consortium. It is not clear yet whether Joel would make a final decision. He's the son of former manager Paul and has been a key part of Brighton's recruitment, joining the club in May 2016 when he became the under-21s recruitment head. He moved up to emerging talent scouting manager in 2018 and has been head of recruitment now for 14 months. His association with Win Stanley predates their time together at Brighton. They also know each other through Paul Drill's time at Wigan, where Win Stanley was performance manager. I wonder if that's the time Reese James was there. Actually, it probably doesn't line up exactly, does it? His role at Brighton included a part in the signing of Alexis McAllister, Moises Caicedo, Facundo Bonanotte, and Julio Enciso. I mean, to be fair, they are really good acquisitions, and if we get a player for, you know, a few million quid before he costs Chelsea 115 million quid, in Moises Caicedo, of course. But again, it's just the Brighton well. No matter how smart this article can make it seem, you cannot evade the optics of Brighton. Oh, we've got some spare time. Should we look at the Brighton catalogue? Speaking to Brighton's club website last summer, Joel said that the succession planning at Brighton meant that upheaval was kept to a minimum. He says this, quote, Departures are part and parcel of football. And while it was sad to see two really good people leave us, it had opened the doors to others, including me. Following Paul's departure, I took on the head of recruitment role on an interim basis, and it was very much business as usual. As well as Win Stanley, Chelsea famously appointed in September 2022, the manager... Graham Potter, paying Brighton substantial compensation. Chelsea appointed four of Potter's Brighton backroom staff and then sacked all but one when they were dismissed, of course, just a few months after appointing him. From that group of former Brighton backroom staff, only goalkeeper coach Ben Roberts remains, working for Chelsea's holding company Bluco, under which both clubs sit. Chelsea also appointed data analyst Carl McCauley from Brighton on the recruitment side, and he remains at the club. On the playing side, Chelsea broke the British transfer record, of course, to sign Caicedo for £115 million. We also signed the goalkeeper Robert Sanchez and fullback Mark Kukurea for £52.5 million, I believe, rising to £60 million. We love Brighton. So is Graham Potter and all his backroom staff. Paul Wynn Stanley, Carl McCauley, Ben Roberts. Um, lots of players, of course. We've taken uh, Rob Sanchez, Mark Kukurea, Moises Caicedo. We loaned them Levi Colwell. We sold them Billy Gilmore, Chelsea and Brighton. They're best friends. I mean, we're not best friends because we're like the rich kid who thinks we're friends with this guy, but they're just taking advantage of us and, you know, making us pay for everything and, you know, use our connections. It's all terribly embarrassing. Maybe I'm being a little bit too cynical here. There is a long-term project and people who know more about football than I do, which, by the way, is a lot of people, <gasps> think Chelsea are doing sensible, smart things. Which is interesting to hear and to learn. Look, man, I knew, we, we've known for a long time more hires are coming, uh, especially in the recruitment. Of course, Paul Wynn Stanley, uh, Lawrence Stewart are the head co-sporting directors and people will come in to work underneath them. And yes, of course, Chelsea want to be a multi-club model. We only have Strasbourg so far, but we're looking, of course, in Liga Noche, uh, the Portuguese League, Brazil, um, the Belgium League, I think the French League as well for other clubs. Oh no, we've already got one in the French League. That's the one that we've got. How do I forget that? Still, other leagues, Chelsea are looking to buy other clubs. And if you've got that, there needs to be an HQ, a mothership core of recruitment people that know all these players and all their clubs. And I know it's cynical, I know it's unsavoury, and yes, you know, the satellite clubs will hate it, but you think there's always this opportunity for the current of the best talent to sort of sway uh, upstream, sway, flow upstream, downstream, just come back to Chelsea, essentially.
And that's what the director's job will be. Yes, it's a bad look, you know, like you think, uh, I understand Strasbourg fans, they're upset with the blue coat ownership. At the moment, largely, they look at Chelsea and they're like, why are these guys qualified to own us? But I think the idea they don't like as well. Of course, it's not always negative. If you look at um, Girona, they I believe they are part of the City football group, which is Man City. Uh, and, like, you know, Man City have got, a, you know, Fabrizio Romano tweeted about Savinho from another league, another young player that's part of their group that's good enough to qualify for Man City. I think those teams are all okay with being, uh, certainly Girona are having a lovely time playing great football. Their fans aren't going, oh no, but we're owned by Man City. Strasbourg haven't been playing great or finishing too high up the table if they creep up the table have better performances in league one which there's scope to do by the way in the quality of that league you can get better results then maybe the fans will stop complaining um but it's their right to complain and protest i'm absolutely you know i've got no issue with that <sighs> so let's bring it on home what do we think well people will laugh at us about another brighton acquisition you'll hear people and pundits on things like talk sports saying oh they've gone back to brighton have they Brighton are making more money out of Chelsea. What's going to happen next? Brighton are going to make another intelligent hire. And we're going to go, oh, can we have them soon? And also, you have to think. You have to like ask the question, like, what's the working relationship like between Chelsea and Brighton right now? Are they like, yeah, you're our scouts, aren't you? And they're like, yeah, I know, but you give us good money, don't you? Is there like an understanding of what's going on here? Do you know what I mean? Or is it like, oh, they're on the phone again, you know? Well, you can't have him. Oh, but we really want him because you want him. Well, you can't. We've just hired him. We'll give you £50 million for him. They've just offered £50 million quid. We'll take it. Yes, all right, Chelsea, come on down. Do you know what I mean? It just seems like silly. But maybe it's not silly. Maybe it's super smart and intelligent. And maybe we'll be all the better for it in a few years' time. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Comment down below. I want to hear your thoughts. Um, feel free to speak a little bit about Reese James, of course, what I spoke about early doors in the video, um, what his reintroduction into the team would mean, and hopefully sooner than expected. And yes, Joel, Joel, whatever this geezer's name is, or however you pronounce it, I'll be very keen to learn, so let me know in the comments what you think about him as well. Uh, for now, I'll thank you for liking and subscribing to Football Therapy. Daily content here, of course. I'd love to have you back. Look after yourselves. Peace.